Hello, hello there. This is Strategic Change Guide Podcast, and it's Motivation on Monday by Jim and Lucy. We are preparing a lot of interesting interviews for you. There will be coming next month. But now we keep going every Monday reminding you why are you here and why you need us, because you need to go your way. And every Monday we have a quotation for you. But this week we want to talk about pessimist and optimist. And I do have a quotation from Winston Churchill for you. And it says, uh, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity and the optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty. How about that? Yes, and you know, the, it, it doesn't mean that you have to be wildly a wide-eyed uh, saying this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. And if, for example, lying in bed every morning and saying, I'm going to make a million dollars today, I'm going to make a million dollars today, but yet you're sleeping your whole day away. You didn't plan anything. I sent, had, had someone send me a uh, an item on Facebook a few weeks ago and it said, uh, from the law of attraction, this is their spin on it, was that uh, you are going to make a million dollars providing you because uh, the law of attraction and likes attract likes. And I wrote back to them, you're going to receive a million dollars providing you earned it last week. And that's the whole secret of all of it, providing you earned it. So you're not going to attract things to you. It does not work that way. And if you're positive, you're going to find new ways of looking at a bad situation. Maybe the direction you've been looking at before didn't work because you only saw it one way. Uh, I happened to listen to a tape by this uh, this uh, T.D. Jakes the other day, and I remember him mes- making interesting uh, a comment. He said, you know, pray each day, have faith. He said, but pray that... Uh, the, that you see the op, the obstacle in a new way, that rather than seeing it the same old way every day and doing the same old thing, see it a different way now. Say, pray that I have a new eyes to see this, a new a, a new motivation to see something in a new way, and that's what you can do. There is a problem actually. There is a law of attraction, but it doesn't work the way that some people understand. Some people believe when you surround yourself with successful people, with rich people, you're going to become rich. No, you're going to be the same poor guy just sitting around rich people but still whining how everything is bad for you somehow and life is unfair. So to change that, you need to work. There are many people who and you will look at, for example, in social network, they, they like, as Jim said, posting. Some of them even posting these photographs of guys with a lot of money, this gold necklace, mm-hmm. you know, this rich lifestyle and everything, saying this is the law of attraction. I'm thinking about that. Yes, you need to change mindset to keep moving towards the direction you want. If it is a rich life, you need to change your mindset. But you still have to work. It doesn't mean that you keep posting these nice photos. You think those are nice photos and you look cool posting them. But what what does it give to you? The same like-minded people who are willing to change their life towards being rich guys, but sitting on the sofa and reposting like in these photos. That's it. Yes, in fact, if you think that works, there's a, a very successful, there was a highly successful basketball player from the East Coast several years ago, and he was, uh, I don't mean to compare anyone to Michael Jordan, but this young man was exciting to watch. He was really, really good. And what happened is that uh, he showered himself. This is part of his background. He showered himself with gold necklaces, the rings, and, and everything, the, the, the exquisite cars, and so on. And when he retired, which all people do, you can't play forever, he was broke. All the millions and millions and millions of dollars he had, he, he had lost all of it. And he only had, then at that time, they were going to repossess some of the jewelry that he was wearing around his neck and on his fingers now. They were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars because that's what he invested in was the jewelry. 
Now just try to imagine that. All the millions and millions of dollars that he had were all gone now. And all he had to his name now was just the gold necklaces. So you want to invest in things that gives you some something to make you think the right way. Invest it in your mind. Because all the other things won't always be there. For example, if you rent an apartment, it depends the level of the apartment, I mean appearance, the design, if it appears to you, if you like it, if you like neighborhood, uh, it will have different effect, effect on you if you read something uh, smaller or not that would, not that good looking as if you want. Sometimes you can't afford something better, but you still need to try to find something that will make you feel good when you walk into that place that inspires you to go next the next day to work and make more. And if you work from home, especially, that's important because this is the space that keeps you going. And to be frank, it's better to project confidence and be positive. Keep the positive mindset. The positive mindset here means uh, not just I will be rich, but it means that yes, I can achieve it. That Listen to that. I will be rich and yes, I can achieve it. The difference is the second statement will have part in F action in it. So it's better for you to project confidence to people around you than trying to project image that you already reach Kai. Because how how is good to look when you all run those reaches, reach people and your check bounce back or your cut, card gets cut <laughs> in the restaurant <laughs> when you meet your rich friends. So don't be foolish. Work hard. Well, the, which is, Lucy is absolutely correct. Uh, almost everybody is quite familiar with Will Smith. He's a great actor. And, and before, you know, a bit before he did The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, um, he was a high school student, and I guess probably about the 10th or 11th grade or so, he made this rap song and a series of them, and they became highly successful. And when he moved away, he, he remember, I remember recalling him saying in his biography that he called his dad to tell him about all the cars that he had just purchased and the extra homes he had bought. And he said that his dad told him, he's unimpressed about his multiple automobiles, he said, but your behind can only sit in one at a time. And a short time later, he said he had spent all of his money taking his friends around on trips around the country and around the world, paying for everybody's hotel uh, bills and their food, his entourage, so to speak, and he lost all of his cars. He had to move back in with his dad. And he lost his homes and everything. And he lost his friends because he was no longer going to subsidize them. So what, when you want to be wealthy, ask yourself this. Put on the extra caveat. I am going to be wealthy. I'm going to find unique ways of building this wealth. But by the same token, I am going to be, I'm going to be wise in how I handle it. You want to be wise. How you handle it, how you keep the money, because that allows you to sleep well at night. So the summary is no success comes overnight and no success comes to lazy people. And if you got lucky, you got inheritance or something or win the lottery, without thinking, you just lose it all. People did. Look around. <laughs> Every day. Yes. So keep going. Keep working. We are here to help you. Just reach out. Go to our website, woodskavalovagroup.com. Send us a message, and we will be here for you to address your questions and help you find your way. We can help you. You take care of yourself and live your dreams. Today. <laughs>